I struggled with anxiety for eight years. I did thousands of hours of research and read over 100 books on this topic. So I will show you 40 life-changing lessons that helped me and many other young men who are just like you to become confident and calm immediately. And all you have to do is to follow these 40 simple steps that literally anyone can follow and you don't have to be an expert or a scientist because I broke them down into super easy and understandable steps. And the first lesson is pretty straightforward. What does anxiety even mean? What is the definition of anxiety? And it comes from the Latin word angor or ango, which just means to constrict, which is a pretty good definition because when you're feeling anxious, it feels like something is holding you back, like you can't escape. Your chest is very tight. You focus on a future event or raising negative thoughts that you can't escape. It's literally like you are getting constricted and getting held back in your ability to perform good. And if we look at the DSM-5, anxiety means the anticipation of danger, which is another good, pretty good definition. The second lesson is that anxiety is psychological. It's thoughts, it's emotions, it's behaviors, it's beliefs. But the third lesson is that it's also biologically hormones like cortisol and adrenaline and sleep, exercise, food, all of the biological things, which brings me directly to the fourth lesson. It's also spiritual. If you disconnect from your true self, if you disconnect from your purpose in life and from the person that you're actually meant to be, you're going to feel anxiety and you're going to have an existential crisis. And the fifth lesson is that we are wired to feel anxious. It's literally just a coping survival mechanism. Without anxiety, we would have gone extinct millions of years ago. So don't hate your anxiety, embrace it. It's trying to protect you. Lesson number six is that anxiety comes from something which is called the cognitive model, which just suggests that anxiety comes from distorted thoughts. Number seven, people think that anxiety stems from avoidance. If you constantly avoid your anxiety, you're going to stay anxious because your brain is actually learning to associate what you feared of with something to avoid, which is just making your anxiety worse. And you're teaching your brain to stay stuck in the cycle, which just repeats itself over and over and over again. And then it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Number eight is a hidden emotional model, which is another theory, which basically just suggests that you have emotions deep down like trauma inside of you that didn't get processed and now your body is staying stuck and, and your mind is staying stuck in survival mode. But again, there's also a biological model, which is lesson number nine, which just means that anxiety is biological. So certain neurotransmitters in your brain are fucked up. Maybe you have a damaged prefrontal cortex. Maybe your amygdala is hyperreactive and hypersensitive. Maybe you're just a hypersensitive person or maybe you just released too much cortisol, not enough dopamine, not enough serotonin. And that's why a lot of people are taking SSRIs, which are basically making your serotonin better inside of your brain, which I will speak about in a second because I have a very controversial take on this. Lesson number 10 is that you find what you look for. When you have an anxious identity, when you see the world through the lens of anxiety and you see everything is dangerous, you're going to see threats everywhere. So literally how you see anxiety, how you see yourself is everything. Don't try to think of a red car. You will see red cars everywhere. And perspective is a good word because point 11 is that you should see anxiety as helpful. So there's literally studies that show when you see anxiety and stress as something that is enhancing your performance, not as something dangerous that is holding you back, you're going to perform better. So whenever you're in a stressful situation, just say, I'm excited. My body is just using this natural response. This is what's supposed to happen. It's completely fine. I don't have to stress out. I don't have to worry. And you're going to perform way better the next time you're about to, let's say, hold a presentation in, five, in front of five people. Point number 12 is that anxiety is a vicious liar. You can't trust anxiety. It's an emotion that you can't understand with logic, reasoning. So you need to question everything that you're believing about yourself, your anxiety, other people, and the world. Number 13, if you're feeling anxious, act. Your anxiety is telling you that there is a problem that you need to solve, usually in the future. So use the energy from the stress response, the fast heartbeat, the blood that's getting shot into your muscles, the hyper focus and overthinking to solve the problem and act. When you solve the problem, the anxiety will go away. And because anxiety is such a vicious liar, you can't listen to it, you can't trust it. So do the opposite of what anxiety tells you. When anxiety is telling you to avoid the situation, to not go outside in public, do that. Do the opposite of what anxiety tells you. Of course, don't do it in a dangerous situation when you're about to die. Point number 15 is that you should be grateful for your anxiety. Once again, don't see it as something that is holding you back. Be grateful for it. Be grateful that you are alive. Be grateful for the energy that it's giving you and use it for something productive that is pushing you forward so you can achieve your goals quicker and faster than you ever thought possible. Point number 16 is to master knowing your anxiety. 
whenever I work with clients, and even in my own life for years, I didn't understand my anxiety. What is it that's making me anxious? So if you don't understand your anxiety, you just end up fixing the wrong problems. You can't fix a problem you don't understand. So ask yourself, what does anxiety feel like? How does it manifest? In which situations am I feeling better or worse? And what can I do about it? Point number 17. You are not your thoughts and emotions. You might think that you are your anxiety. You might think that you are this anxious identity that you created and everything in your life is revolving around your anxiety. You are not that. Learn to detach from your thoughts. Learn to detach from your emotions. You are a normal human being. You are way more than the label that you put on yourself. Point number 18. Clearly define your emotions. You have muddy emotions and you have clear emotions. So whenever you have a muddy emotion, first of all, become aware of it. Why are you feeling this right now? Is it reasonable that you're feeling this way? Why are you feeling anxious? Is it something that is actually happening in your life that should make you anxious? Or are you just feeling anxious because you woke up <laughs> on the wrong side of the bed? Label it. Is it anxiety? Is it fear? Is it stress? How does it feel? Do I want to reduce this emotion? Is this something I want to get rid of? If yes, act in the opposite way. If no, do nothing about it. Just label it and accept it. Point number 19. Use the energy that anxiety is giving you to work towards your goals, which ties directly into step number 20. Hard and passionate work is the best way to quiet the mind. So find something that you love, something that you can work on all day long, something that is energizing you, not sucking energy away from you, and just go all, on the, just go all in on that. Because when you're in a flow state, so you're completely in the present moment. There is no room for anxiety because anxiety is mostly living inside of the future. Journal about your problems. It has been proven that journaling about your problems and writing them down is more effective than just speaking about them. So whenever you have a problem, journal about it. Clearly define it, find solutions to the problem and your anxiety will go away. Which brings me to step number 22 is to sit in silence. In the modern day world, we're constantly getting bombarded with and information. We constantly have an information overload and that is making you anxious because you can't process all of the information that you receive. So when you sit in silence, you get to understand what's really going on, what you're really feeling, what you really have to work on, what you should stop doing. But when you're constantly in this mindless state like a zombie, constantly getting information, you can't, you don't have room to think. Of course you're going to be anxious. Lesson number 23 is to breathe through your belly. You can breathe through your chest. So very shallow breaths and you can breathe deeply through your bello belly. So whenever you're breathing, let your belly bulge out. Don't be insecure. It's going to calm you down. It's way more effective than just breathing through your chest. Lesson number 24. Anxiety is a stress response and your body can also feel stress which is called inflammation. And your brain is directly connected to your gut. And when you have an inflammation inside of your gut, you can feel anxious. And it can be very, very bad and can last forever. In fact, if you've been feeling anxious and you don't really know why, because your life is kind of perfect, you have nothing to think about, it might be inflammation. So maybe consider changing your diet. Avoid sugar, especially refined sugars and refined carbs. Avoid processed foods, avoid fried foods, avoid alcohol and avoid smoking so you don't trigger the inflammation inside of your body which is actually giving you a stress response. There's more than one type of a stress response. There are actually multiple stress responses depending on the situation that you're getting stressed in. For example, there's also the tend and befriend response which is actually reduce uh, like increasing hormones like oxytocin inside of your body that make you feel connected to other people. Number 26. When you're feeling anxious, you have to decide if it's a true emotion or a false emotion. A true emotion is anything that is actually reasonably for you to feel anxious about. So a death of a family member, or maybe you lost your job, or maybe someone broke up with you. It's normal and okay and fine to feel anxious in those situations. You don't have to do much about it. It's just a normal human thing. Accept it. False emotions, on the other hand, happen when you just feel anxious out of the blue. A very nice perspective to adopt is to understand that everyone is suffering. You are not alone with your struggles. I still struggle with anxiety sometimes. The person right next to you is also struggling. Maybe not with anxiety, but maybe they have depression. Maybe they just lost someone. Maybe they're struggling financially. Everybody's struggling. You're not alone. You can do it. If you're feeling depressed, you're most likely going to feel anxious because depression leads to hopelessness. And then you start to think about the future and all of the what ifs with them create anxiety. But if you're feeling anxious, you're also most likely going to be depressed because when you're anxious, you think about the future and all of these overwhelming problems that you can't solve. Then you have the sense of hopelessness and feeling lost, which again can create depression. Lesson number 29, a personal take that most people agree with. I hate medication. I hate SSRIs. 
Why? Well, it's just like you have a car and you have rust on the car and then you put some new paint on the car. The rust is still there. You just cover it up. It's not actually fixing the, the real cause. Work on your identity. Your identity is your blueprint for your behavior. What you believe, you will act on and it will become a self-fulfilling prophecy. And you can't act out of alignment with your self-image because that will create a lot of pain called cognitive dissonance. So work on your beliefs, work on your identity, work on your self-esteem, work on your self-worth. If you're suffering from anxiety, I know you're going through a lot of pain, but it has been proven and many times it has been shown before that people who suffer the most also help the most. That's exactly why I created this YouTube channel. So I would like to invite you to help someone else out. I know you're struggling with your own personal problems, but you can give advice, you can give something good back to the world. And by helping other people, you can actually reduce your suffering. Lesson number 33, there is no secret. There's no secret tactic to reduce anxiety within a second. I know I'm guilty of this as well. And I put that into my titles and into my, you know, hooks and stuff like that to get attention. That's just how the world works. We have to get attention. But there is no secret, there is no shortcut, there is no magic pill that you can take. The only secret there is, is in the work that you're avoiding. Because you know what to do. You know what you should do to reduce your anxiety. And you're not doing it. Doing it is a secret. Because everyone else is not doing it. And then you get ahead. Lesson number 34. Never avoid your anxiety. Your anxiety is telling you all of these lies. Anxiety fuels on avoidance. The more you avoid anxiety, the worse it will become. You need to reprogram your mind. And the best way to do that is through direct experience. So if you're scared of public speaking, go public speak. Go public speaking. If you're scared of talking to a girl, talk to 20 girls. You will realize that you're suffering more in imagination than in reality. And anxiety will disappear. That's number 35. You only change when you're sick of your sickness. What do I mean by that? Well, I had the most amount of growth in my entire life when I accepted my anxiety and I realized that something is wrong and I got so sick of feeling this way and I had to change every single time in my life. Also, when I was heavily obese and I got bullied at school, it triggered something inside of me that I went to the gym every single day for three years. I haven't missed a single workout and now I look better and whatever. So use the pain to your advantage. Use it as fuel. Number 36. Expect the worst. You are dealing with selfish people. Every single person of us is selfish. Even when we're doing something good for other people, we're just doing it in hopes of getting a return and a benefit for ourselves. So whenever you start to feel anxious about something that other people are doing, just expect the worst. I'm not saying that you should have like a nihilism view on humanity, but just it's like lower your standards a bit and just detach yourself from other people. So when something bad happens, you don't get anxious, you don't start to overthink. Expect the worst, you're dealing with selfish people. Lesson number 37, optimize your environment. You have probably have certain actions that you're doing that are making your anxiety worse, like eating ice cream, not exercising, not getting enough sunlight, playing video games, jerking off, whatever it is. Optimize your environment, just remove everything from your environment that is triggering you to do these bad habits and increase all of the things that you want to do in your environment. So example is, when I was addicted to video games, I got rid of my PlayStation, I plucked it out of my TV and I put it away under my bed. What did I do instead? I got weights, put them right in front of me, and now I'm working out almost every single day because they are in my environment, not my PlayStation. That's number 38, except death. And I know this sounds weird, but what is at the bottom of fear? Why do we have the fight for the first response to stay alive? What are we running away from? Death. What is keeping anxiety and fear alive? Avoiding death. Except that you're going to die. Nothing matters. This video doesn't matter. All the tips I just gave you don't matter. In 80 years, you're going to die. People are going to live on and on and on and on and on. No one is going to remember you. If you don't believe me, think of the Queen Elizabeth, who died like one and a half years ago. No one is speaking about her anymore. She was more influential than all of us combined. No one gives a shit. 39. You have to become he who can. Stop chasing goals. Chase characters. You're not at the spot where you want to be right now. You're not confident and calm because you're not the person that deserves to be confident and calm. So ask yourself, what are all of the actions I could take so I would deserve and become the person that I want to become, to be calm and confident? Hey, this is a nice way to end the video. My camera just turned off anyway. Lesson number 40 is that you should stop waiting. Everyone is waiting for the perfect conditions to start, but the perfect condition is starting. Take one small step today, apply one of the 39 other lessons that you have learned and do something about it today, no matter how small. And these 40 lessons are just one piece in the puzzle towards overcoming anxiety. If you want to know all of the mistakes that I did in the last eight years and all the lessons I have learned, click on this video right now and you will become confident and calm, faster than you could have ever imagined.
Thanks for watching and please take action.